depiction of perhaps the most amazing man in the world. His name is Peter Herkos, reputable scientist of many countries, after intensive investigation, declare him the psychic marvel of the 20th century. Alcoa presents a new and unusual kind of television program that takes you just beyond the world in which you live. Alcoa presents Aluminum, from the world's leading producer, Aluminum Company of America, who creates new and unusual uses of this wondrous metal for the world in which you do live. And now, John Newland takes you one step beyond. Many of the most incredible incidents in the world of psychic phenomena have strangely enough emerged from war, as though men had to be reminded that despite the senseless carnage, they were somehow still in contact with the spiritual, the divine. Now, nothing in the world of psychic phenomena is more remarkable than what happened to Peter Herkos. And that too, strangely enough, began in war. Amsterdam, 1944. The Dutch underground. The strange road Herkos traveled into the world of the unknown begins here and now. Peter Herkus should be dead. He fell 50 feet. He has been unconscious for six days. He is not dead, but he is changed. Now look how excited I am, like a schoolboy. I haven't seen my family one whole week. Now remember what the doctor told you. Yeah, yeah. Take it easy, I know. I mean, it's very simple for a doctor to say, take it easy. I will send him my grocery bill. I will say to my landlord, I'm sorry about my rent, but a doctor said I have to take it easy. Men here? Oh, no, no, please, lie down. You have to lie down. Where am I? In the hospital. You have a serious concussion. How long have I been here? Six days. Six days? No, no, please don't worry. The doctor filled out an accident report. You were run down by a lorry. And 
value were having your snooze, our allies smashed through Schleswig-Holstein to the Baltic. Robert. Oh, also, you cornered the market <laughs> on potato soup. Tante Elsa. I didn't know she was your aunt. Oh, she's everybody's aunt in the whole rooming house. You know, she told me my fortune from cards. I'm sure she did. No, 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 she, she's very good. She said, I'm, I'm going to be one of the richest men in Holland. Whatever I'm going to touch will turn into gold. So. Well, get well soon, my friend. I mean, hell. Well, for a sick man, he is the strength of a bull. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Who is that man? His name is August Breitner. Breitner? Mm-hmm. Emergency, appendectomy. Stop him. What? Stop him. Breitner. No. Breitner. No, please. Men here. He is going to be killed tonight. Men here, you mustn't excite yourself. Tonight, don't you understand? The Germans know all about him. He's going to be killed on Cleo Street. Breitner. Sorry, no, I'm an absent-minded professor. I told you I'm excited. It always happens if I'm excited. Bye-bye. Breitner. Breitner. Stop him. Stop him. Dangerous if you get out. Breitner. Now, Men here, Men here. Stop him. Stop him. You had a very serious concussion. You were unconscious for six days. Two grains of second I, I knew it. When I touched him. I know. What? Uh -huh. I saw it. British intelligence agents shot on Cleo Street. How did you know? But I've told you. You, you touched his hand and you knew. Yes. How stupid do you think we are? I'm telling you the truth. I tried to stop him, didn't I? See? Why? Because you had a moment of compassion? I suppose a traitor could have a moment of compassion. Traitor? How else could you know that Brighton would be killed on Cleo Street? I've told you. The nurse saw it. It, it just came to me. Oh, it just came to you. I have been in the underground for three years. Before that, I was in a German work camp. And before that, I was in Bockenwald. I have fought the Germans in my native Spain, in Greece, now here. The sad truth is that a month from now, I might find that my shoes are too thin, my room too cold. A German sausage to appear there. No! You're wrong about me! You're wrong about me! You're wrong about me! Come on, Maven, Fugna! Matara la gente! Come on, me, the Fugna! Matar a la gente. Marta. A la gente. Como me era pugna matar a la gente. What is it? He said what I was thinking. How I hate killing. Sometime when I'm... When I'm under strain, I think in Spanish, but how could he know? How could he know? You don't act like a man who's going home. Mr. Herkus, you're as good as new. If I'm just as good as new, why can't I just go? You know, Dr. Molehouse must have charged you. Doesn't anyone hear it but me? 
You what? The, the, the voices. The twisting, the turning, the, the, the screams. Mr. Herkus, please. Doesn't anyone hear it but me? The voices and visions persisted. Everything he touched pushed him deeper into a world of sights and sounds from which there was no escape. His mind was no longer his own, his every waking moment a torment. Each new day brought fresh despair. What have you been doing sitting there since last night? Good morning, Tante Elsa. Good morning, my land. Oh. You know, I think you drink too much. It's the only way I can stop the voices. And how are you going to stop them tomorrow? That's the last of the wine, my lamb. Business was terrible this week. Thanks to Miss Rao Higgins. She's been spreading lies about me. I told the fat fool that her Uncle Herman was going to die and leave her 5,000 hilders. But they gave him one of those new wonder drugs. Was it my fault? What are you going to do? I don't know, and I don't care. You'll care tomorrow. Maybe I should go to see the doctor at the university. No! Why not? Maybe he can help me. He'll do to you what so many have done to me. Doubt you, mock you, destroy your faith in yourself. Faith? What faith? Whatever you are, you are. And what am I, huh? I'm... I'm just a jungle of sounds oh, and screams. Oh, jungle. Sounds and screams. What kind of talk is that? I'll tell you what you are. Oh, yes. The cards. The cards. Isn't this remarkable? Do you know that the same cards, in the same sequence, are coming up for you day after day after day? That only means you can be a brilliant success. Brilliant beyond belief. Uh, and what does this card say? That I can fly like a pig and this card now, says... Now, stop making fun of my cards. They've provided me with a good living for the last 50 years, and you for the last six months. I'm sorry, Dante. I'm sorry. I'll try to pay you back somehow. How? Since the war has ended, I've tried to get a job, haven't I? A job doing what? Painting houses? Well, what else do I know? What don't you know? Should I make you a little confession, huh? Everybody loves Tante Elsa in the building, isn't that right? You're very good to everybody, Tante Elsa. Oh, sure, sure. Tante Elsa, always bringing rock candy for the kiddies. And an old scar for a cheap bracelet for the ladies. A kettle of potato soup for the sick, huh? Yes, and a sweet, sweet smile for one and all. Everybody loves Tante Elsa. But Tante Elsa needs their love, too. You know why? Because she's probably a witch. So, if she is not to burn, she'd best be a dear, sweet witch. But you, Peter, you are a special case. I give you wine because you are not merely a neighbor anymore. You are a colleague. Colleague, what are you talking about? I am going to help you. Really help you. Not for a mere 80 huldens a week, such as the learned doctor has offered you. How? Do you have a clean shirt, my lamb? And if you take my advice, Herr Stahl, you won't invest one gulder in your son-in-law's business because you won't get back one stifer. <laughs>
I see we have another question from someone in the audience. The name of this person is... Just one moment, ladies and gentlemen. I know exactly how it's done. The paper can't burn. It goes down a chute. The name of this person is... Peter Hulkos. Will Peter Hulkos rise, please? What's he talking about? I sent no message. Oh, yes, you did. The question asked by Peter Hulkos is... How can I get a job like yours, since I am so much better? <laughs> and uh, Elsa, what have you done? Well... Will Peter Hokos rise, please? Well, do you think you can give psychic readings better than I, mein Herr? I, uh, uh... You were so sure of it when you wrote the note, and now you stutter. Come, mein Herr. If you have gifts greater than mine, you must demonstrate them. Well, will the gifted Herr Rokos consent to share the stage with me? <laughs> well, my dear. A man with such gifts should not keep the stage. The whole world waiting. Please step right up here. <laughs> so, this is our psychic marvel. <laughs> what is your method? How do you work? How does the truth come to you? Tell us, please. I touch things. <laughs> <laughs> you touch things. And what would you like to touch, mein Herr? Well, <laughs> not my wife. <laughs> what my watch do? What uh, marvelous things does my watch tell you uh, beyond the fact that it is 8.15? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Apparently, my watch is not telling anything. <laughs> Would you like to try my suspenders? Your... <laughs> Your watch tells me much. Oh, now he is getting it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Inside the case, there's a lock of hair. Blonde. Not your wife's. Nonsense. A girl that you take from town to town. She's in the audience now. Please forgive the interruption, ladies and gentlemen. If uh, Herr Rokos will kindly go back to his seat, perhaps we can continue the demonstration. Will you kindly go back to your seat, Harold Coase? This is Greta. Peter Herkos became an instant continental sensation. But he was untrained in the mechanical tricks of the professional magician. He could rely only on his remarkable psychic gift. And soon he began to fear he would lose that which in the beginning he had not wanted. It's such a fancy place you'd think they'd have better accommodations for visiting artists. Still, the rich were never known for their generosity. What is it, my lad? Just this morning when I woke up, I thought it was gone. I mean, disappeared. It will never go. Did I not tell you you would be rich and famous? The doctor said it could go like this. Peter, you're so depressing. Did you ever think that one day you would be entertaining in the great manner of one of our great patriots? What if I'm not good? What if I'm ridiculous? What if they laugh at me? Never. It's strange. Right after the accident, I asked him to cut open my head and take out whatever it was. And now I'm afraid to lose it. That's funny. I 
I'm spoiled to be a house painter. Take them. Oh, no. Will I be good tonight? Oh, Peter, you're ridiculous. Read them. You're teasing me. Tell me how good I will be tonight. Me, a fortune teller. Telling anyone with your powers. All right, I know it's silly. Do it anyhow. I... Uh... What would have happened to me? I would be nothing again. What do they say? Tell me. Nothing. They do. Tell me. They say what they have always said. That my lamb is going to have great success. We are ready for you now. I hope you will be as amusing as you were in the theater, Mr. Herkes. Now, since my husband's illness, these little entertainments are very important to keep up his spirits. Please come along with me here. This is a surprise I promised before dinner. Mr. Peter Herkes, the man with the radar brain. Oh, lucky, my dear. Fortune teller. I've seen him in the theater. He is marvelous. My name is Reinbos. It's an honor to be a guest in your house. My assistant will pass among you, and if you will be so kind as to just give her some personal items. Does my vow object if I use that yes. tray? Thank you. And when he says, watch your liver, you watch your liver. <laughs> The uh, next article is a lady's locket. It belongs to the lady of the house. Very clever. Frau Reinvos wishes to know if I can tell her what she will be celebrating next week. That's right. Yes. You will be celebrating your 25th wedding anniversary. What's so wonderful about bed? All you had to do was just read the morning papers. Don't be so skeptic, John. I proved to you that he's really psychic. See what you can do with this. My nair, my was doesn't believe that I can do what I can do, I, I get that from the cigarette case. <laughs> and more. Peter, what's the matter? Much more. Sixteen Dutchmen. What sort of a man are you? Sixteen men shot. This man is insane. This man is insane. You are insane. You... Give it to me. Give it back. John! He's a traitor. He was honored by our country as a patriot. And he betrayed us. Sixteen men shot. Sixteen Dutchmen shot. And his fault. Are you out of your mind? He made a deal with the Nazis. They ran his factories, but he controlled them. He's dead. He's dead. Jean Rhine was his dead. Liar! 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 It's the truth. It is the truth. It was true. But it was five lonely, haunted years for Peter Herkos before it was proven to be true. In a moment, I will tell you something about those years. Next week, in a specially devised laboratory and on the scene of a shocking murder, the scientific world learns many fantastic things about the incredible psychic gifts of Peter Herkos. Be sure to be with us for the conclusion of the Peter Herkos story. <laughs>